Good afternoon. Does that resonate? And does that ring the bell, my dear student friends, from before and to all of you who are logged in to this very new How to Festival 3.0, which is to help you discover products through the online classroom, which is brought to you by Locator and presented by LIC and several other brand partners. It gives me great pleasure. And to all of those of you who are joining in for the first time, let me introduce myself. I'm Ramesh Iyengar. I'm the founder and the director of this company and the brand called Locator, which has been interacting and creating this knowledge platform, not only with the architect professionals industry, wide, but also you students in the top colleges of architecture. So with that, let me walk you through this wonderful day. Uh, you're in for some really uh, uh, good surprises. And do tell me, uh, team, are we ready to go? And if you can see the slides, that's it. The How to Festival 3.0, discovering products through the online classroom. The Locator brand is 26 years old. We commenced in 1995. And what does it do? What does it do? It's a knowledge platform. It's a bridge for professional practicing architects and product manufacturers. And this was a gap that we noticed, I noticed 26 years ago, and we fulfilled that gap. For the longest part, for 20 years, we gave it out as a thick volume, printed volume. And then with changing times, 
we are entirely digital. That's what you see on screen, www.locatorindia.com. This will come very often. You don't have to worry. We'll put it in the chat box so you can always go and refer to it at your leisure. Why do you need to refer to it at your leisure? It has 187 product categories. It has 1,800 plus products, information on them, and it has the technical specifications, contact details, and much, much more. So don't worry. We'll keep pasting www.locatorindia.com for you in your chat box so that you can refer to it at your leisure. Now, what are the other things we did at Locator for the Industry? We created and launched India's first and only Experts' Choice Awards. As the name suggests, the experts were practicing architect professionals who voted for the best products in 24 different categories. So we, we usurped one more vertical in the knowledge platform by launching these awards for products because who better than practicing architects to judge and decide which is the best product within a certain category. So in this long journey, I have to say it has been a fabulous journey for us at Locator with students too. Starting with 2007 in Bombay, in five colleges, we were, we were doing seminars and display systems. And now over the last three years, we've gone to all India, to the top architectural colleges. You would like to know what you've done. The flashback, there's so much to talk and there's so little time, but every uh, webinar from now till end of, till the middle of March, what I will be doing is to just cover two or three colleges who participated in the last year and uh, some trivia about that. So let's take a look at the flashback for this show, which is three colleges starting in alphabetical order with Amity School of Architecture and Planning Gurugram. And here are our two heroes, Bharat, and I know them all by first names. I don't know if you're all on the show today, but then if you are, hello, welcome again. And if you are, please join in. Friends should tell you to do so. So we had uh, winners and engagers from Amity. Then we had Bharati Vidya Pete from Pune with uh, winners from them too. And they were engagers who were constantly um, chatting us, with us, with each other and keeping the whole session session very lively. And then we had Birla Institute of Technology. By the way, all of these colleges are also part of this year's festival. And then we had a whole host of them uh, winning the engagers and, and quiz winners and Q&A winners. A little more about what winning means in a minute. But before that, it's my pleasant task and duty to welcome the colleges of this festival and they are a uh, plenty. They are all the top colleges, again in alphabetical order. Amity School of Architecture and Planning, Gurugram, and the Amity Schools from Jaipur, Gwalior, Raipur, and of course, Mumbai. Moving to B, we have Bharati Vidya Pete from Pune again. All of these colleges are uh, welcoming once again. Birla Institute of Technology, Mesra Ranchi, BMS College of Architecture from Bengaluru, Chandigarh College of Architecture from Chandigarh. Then you have IES College of Architecture from Mumbai, ITM from Raipur, Jadavpur University from Kolkata, Jamia Bilia Islamia from New Delhi, Guwahati College of Architecture, welcome uh, to our debutant in this year uh, from Guwahati, Malvia National Institute of Technology, Jaipur, NIT from Raipur, Rachna Sansad Academy from Mumbai, Rizvi College from Mumbai, and yes, R leads us to the next alphabet. Of course, we have RV College from Bengaluru, and then we have SCT from Surat, School of Planning and Architecture, which is also known as JNFAU from Hyderabad, Siahangad College from Pune, Sir JJ College of Architecture, the premier college of architecture in this country from Mumbai, Shushan School of Art and Architecture, Gurugram, Thakpur School from Mumbai, Vaishnavi School from Hyderabad, and another debutant, Waxen University School of Planning and Ar Architecture, Hyderabad. What a wonderful lineup of top flight colleges. And I'm sure the students who are engaged with us are making them feel worthy of being the top colleges of architecture in India. So students, last year I used to say the MKF factor, 
and all of you will chuckle through that because what is the MKF factor? Is the menu key fayda? So tenu e fayda. This is your fayda. What's in it for you? And that is first. There are, by the way, you've seen the post today. There are seven good reasons to be here. I'm going to cover the ones which are really uh, very interesting ones in this case. Quizzes. We've got some really easy to win prizes. And there are four quiz winners every episode, every event, every Saturday. And you could be one of them. All you got to do is listen to the content of the brand presenter, which is the reason why we are on this webinar. Are we not... We are going to learn today about sustainability in the built environment from some uh, really, really top flight brand uh, called Godrej, and a little more about that later, and from an expert. So whilst you listen and you learn, you will get a chance to do a quick, easy peasy MCQ styled quiz with just four options, hit the right option, submit your thing, and the computer will do the rest. So we got... Uh, quizzes, which is based only on the content of the brand presenter. So it's not like a typical exam. It is only what you heard in 10 minutes. We break the presentation and then we will continue after the quiz with the second part. And then there'll be a second quiz. So you'll have totally four questions. Attempt all of them. If you got it all right, you're in to win a prize. What more can you do? In the bottom of your webinar control panel on Zoom webinar, you'll see a Q&A box. All you gotta do is to win four more prizes and all these prizes are thousand rupee Amazon GVs. To win four more prizes, you have to put your question in the question Q&A box. Our experts will curate those questions and they're gonna be answered live because you'll be asking questions as you hear the presenter. And we will have him live answering those questions to you on this platform. So what you need to do is put your questions, the cues, in the Q&A box. And the four edgy questions, the smart ones, and we've had really smart questions all, all along in the festival, stand to win a prize each, as I mentioned, of a thousand rupee Amazon GV. And by the way, this is not just once. This is in every event, every show. But then it doesn't stop there. Show us your love. In addition to your questions and answering questions, we are going to reward the chatty ones. And we have a lot of uh, happy chatty friends on the How To Festival because it's an online platform and we're not able to see each other. So at least we can chat. And so your suggestions, your love and your involvement, four of those engagers also get to win. So I think we're doing good on the prizes front in terms of announcement. Now let's see with your engagement whether we actually do good in giving it away. And what else do you get? You get a certificate of participation. This can be a value addition because product knowledge is not everybody's domain. And if you have been tutored and if you are going to excel, then this is something which can give you an edge when you're talking to your prospective employers. And also, you get lifelong access as a privileged student of the How To Festival to archive by locator. Archive is our repository, is a central place where everything is reposed. So today you just have to listen to the presentation, absorb it, don't need to make note, nothing. Get it into you, sink into you. And anytime you can go to archive on locatorindia.com and see PDF documents, videos, technical drawings, Q and A's answered, all those which are not answered on the show will be dutifully answered and put in the FAQ section. Ha ha! It doesn't end there. So all my old friends, if you're on the show, the previous attendees from the last festival, then you will know, are yaar, ab kya? Don't worry, you're a part of the show, so it's, your, it's valid for you too. We've got a brand new competition and it's called I wish, you wish, and I wish. I wish, what is I wish? I wish is a challenge for innovators. Challenge for innovators like you, people with an innovative brain, an innovative intuitive sense. You use so many of these products, you've used them in college, you've done for your practical, you've done it for your projects. 
you use it at home. You see it in offices where you go, in restaurants, in theaters, in malls. You are exposed to the world of products. And wouldn't it have crossed you? I wish they had designed this differently. This is your big chance to put that I wish thought into action. So the challenge for innovators works very simply. What should you do? Submit an innovation. Your suggestion should be original, unique, and worthy of being picked out a winner from all suggestions, submissions. Entries must be limited to 150 words and must be supported by a drawing or illustration. So there will be a link which you can click and this is open through the entire festival. We are not deciding on the innovators uh, who are the winners of I wish till such time we end the competition and that is still the end of the how to festival. And what do you get for this? You get the top 10 innovations will be picked up by a expert panel, people who are themselves innovators and the winning entrance photo, your innovation will be featured on the locator website for posterity. So that's one, which is a recognition, but hey, 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 it doesn't end there. You'll each get an Amazon GV of rupees 2,500. So there are prizes galore. Let me quickly sum up. Joining the quiz is there on every show. It comes on your screen. There's a link in the chat box. Click the link, give your answer, win the prize. As simple as that. Make sure you ask questions, 4NG questions, and they'll be selected from all those which are going to be answered on the show but you also get to win a prize if your questions are edgy. In addition, chat away, ask us, suggest to us, show your love, do everything, and for your engagement, get rewarded. And what do I say? Use that God-given gift of yours for suggesting innovations, which will be worthy of being picked up as a top 10 winner and also get rewarded and get recognized for it. I think that's a... Hello, Lord of Action, which is happening. So with that, why don't we start learning something new? And this is what we are here for on this platform. In a tight 20-minute encapsulation with so much work which goes into the background to bring it to you. It's like, you know, you have a TED Talk and you get to understand the whole world in 10 minutes. In these 20 minutes, you'll get to understand today's presentation for which I have great pleasure in introducing to you and welcoming Mr. Sumesh G. Nair, who is the Assistant General Manager at Godrej Green Building Department, that is Godrej Electricals and Electronics Vertical of the company. Mr. Sumesh Nair is a lead and IGBC accredited professional. He's a BE Certified Energy Manager, Griha Trainer, and ECBC Certified Master Trainer. Now, if I'm smiling whilst I'm reading out L-E-E-D, I-G-B-C, E-C-B-C, you know why. If you saw the post, uh, yeah, they're all four letters. So we're going to learn something about four letter words. Uh, Sumesh Nair, he currently leads the team of consultants at Godrej Green Building Consultancy Services under the four letter word, G-B-C-S. In his 17 year stint with Godrej, he's consulted with more than two 100 plus green building projects. If you look at him, he doesn't look like he could have done 200 buildings, but he's been the lead on 200 building projects. And he was part of the team that achieved the IGBC net zero energy certification for India's first IGBC certified net zero building, which is in Vikroli, Mumbai, at the Rochanagar at the Godrej Complex. Wow, what a run up, I think. Take it away, Sumesh, and tell us more about. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sumesh Lair. I am representing uh, Odrigen Voices Electric and Electronic Division. Uh, I'm glad to be here among uh, the fraternity today for the uh, How to Festival 3.0. I believe the earlier two versions have been received very well by your earlier batchmates, and I believe even this particular uh, fest will be much beneficial to all of you. And I look forward to engaging with you 
over the next 20 minutes on this presentation. I would also like to thank uh, the organizers uh, locator who are in their 26th uh, year of organizing and uh, I thank them for uh, setting up this platform and able, enable us to connect over this. So the next 20 minutes I'm going to share uh, with you our experience of working on sustainability in the built environment space which I'm sure will be really interesting for all of you. So we'll touch upon uh, certification programs like LEED, IGBC, and also I'll tell you something about the new trends which are emerging in the sustainability space. With that opening note, I'll get into the presentation. Allow me to share these slides. So as I said, uh, let me introduce my organization issue. Uh, I'm part of the Bodhis and Boys Electrical Electronic Division. Our company has presence across 10 industries and over 80 countries. Uh, we have a turnover of more than 1.5 billion, and we employ close to 14,000 employees. And most of the employees you can see are based out of our Victoria campus, which you can see in this image. It is crawling 3,000 acre plus campus, which houses our industrial plants as well as residential colonies at Victoria. The list of around 14 divisions, which are part of the Bodhi and Boys vertical. Right from appliances to aerospace to interior and even construction, we are part of many verticals today. And I represent the Goodrich Electrical Electronic Division, which is one of the 14 business areas of Goodrich and Boys, and has been open since the back the time the company was born. The brand strives to contribute to the vision of delivering sustainable technology solutions. Just to set a context for the presentation, we are all aware recently there was a COP26 conference which, which happened at Glasgow. And some of the objectives which came out and the kind of targets which India has taken, I think we all of us are aware we have taken some strict targets for our country to achieve on the sustainability radar. So by 2030, we need to kind of install non fossil fuel electricity capacity to a tune of 500 gigawatt, achieving carbon intensity reduction to a of 45% over 2005 levels, and ultimately even achieving a net zero target by 2070. However, at Godrej, our journey on sustainability is not started very recently. We have been very conscious when it comes to sustainability, and even and it starts right at the Godrej family level. So even before the Paris Agreement came in or the COP26 came in, we were already on our path to various initiatives in terms of achieving this objective of sustainability in our organization. So some of the programs which today we are part of are Global Alliance on Energy Productivity, Science-Based Targets Initiative, Renewable Energy Demand Enhancement, Advancing Net Zero with the help of World Green Building Council, and very recently we have even signed up for the EP100 initiative. So just to give you a clue on the EP100 initiative, what it talks about is reducing the energy intensity of our production across our factories by 50% over the next 10 years. Also, the kind of department, the department which I represent within Electrical Electronic Division, which is called the Green Consulting and Energy Management Vertical. Here we provide green building consultancy services, not only for, for our internal operations, but we also work with our external customers in terms of providing lead IGBC, Griha, or whatever certification programs which are available in the market for the sustainability perspective. We also provide third party testing and commissioning services, which is to do with you know, delivering the kind of efficiency the NEP systems promise in a building. We validate whether that kind of energy savings happen through the testing and commissioning services. So where did our journey began with green buildings? It dates back right to the first green building which came up in India. This is the image of the first green building in India. It's called a CIS or of the Goodrich Green Business Sector. So this was partly funded by Goodrich. It was the vision of Mr. Jamshed Goodrich. He came in with an idea that unless you start off with a building in India, people do not really understand what we're talking about green buildings. And that's how this building was conceived. So from a 20,000 square feet humble beginning back in 2002, 2003, Today, we are talking about 8 billion square feet of registered green building footprint in India. And we have also been part of the green building services right from this first green building. 
today where we have been awarded by ABC as the green champion for being a consultant with the most green building footprint in the country. So some of our achievements, we have helped our customers to save carbon CO2 emissions to a tune of 250,000 metric tons. We have impacted around 400 plus million square feet, completed around 300, 400 odd projects. Most of our projects have been either gold or platinum. So in addition to the services which we provided electrical electronic division, there are allied services also which go into the building, like our MEP system or the MEP vertical, which is into installing all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems in the building. So as a consultant, we recommend our projects to install efficient MEP systems. So this is a department which is basically involved in installing these MEP systems into the building. Secondly, our fire, that is a power infrastructure renewable energy department, is into evacuation of power, that is distribution uh, of power uh, through laying through uh, you know, erecting substations and transmission of power. And very importantly, we are also into renewable energy EPC contracts. So as you are aware, for green buildings for net zero, renewable energy is one of the real you know, game changers, and we are also in that space. The third uh, vertical under the, elect, uh, under the electrical electronic provision is the bus duct vertical, which is again to simply put and to be identified by architects. It's a substitute for cable, which is used to kind of evacuate power from it can be a transformer or a DT set into the building. So it is an efficient way of transferring power compared to a cable, and that is why it is also important to consider bus duct instead of cable. So this is one of our overseas installation of power distribution system, which has been done in Mexico for a 800 megawatt combined cycle power plant. These are the kind of capabilities which comes. That brings me to our topic of the day today, where we talk about green certification, what are the certification programs which are available in the country today. So starting off, today we need to understand that in India, we have an option to go with three certification programs. The First ever certification program which was introduced in India was, of course, from the United States. The United States Green Building Council launched the LEED certification program. Uh, then in 2007, IGBC was formed, that is the Indian Green Building Council. And very recently, Terry, the Energy Research Institute of India, launched the GRIHA certification program. So more or less, all the three certification programs talk about the same language in terms of sustainability. They address sustainability in a very holistic way. Method. However, the only problem is LEED being a global rating program maybe doesn't address the Indian context of the sustainability. However, IGBC and GRIHA apply to the Indian context. Also, what IGBC has done is basically develop multiple rating programs which suits different types of buildings. For example, LEED doesn't have a specific rating system today to address a data center or a warehouse or a residential home. However, IGBC is currently developed around 30 rating programs, which is addressing different kind of buildings. Now, how does how do these rating programs work? Uh, basically, these rating programs are divided into different category in terms of the number of points. So it's a points-driven rating system, basically. So you have points distributed across various aspects in terms of the integrated process, location, and transportation. Now, as you say, you know, even location and transportation for green building is very important to cut down on the carbon emissions due to ferrying people from, uh, it can be an office building or it can be a residential building, but being close to public transport is one of the important criteria. The other criteria are sustainable sites, uh, wherein it talks about what kind of greenery you have in the premises, what percentage of your land is green and so on and so forth. Water efficiency, of course, addresses reducing the water demand, rainwater harvesting and all of that. Energy efficiency, as you can see, is the category with the most number of points. It has around 33 points dedicated. That is almost 30% of the rating program. Materials and resources, the kind of materials which go into the construction of the building, how sustainable they are, what is the kind of recycled content that goes into them. Indoor environmental quality talks about health and productivity of people. It addresses the daylight, which as architectural students is very important. As, you, as we all know, in terms of how important daylight is uh, uh, from, from the health and productivity perspective, as well as in terms of bringing down the energy on artificial light. Similarly, there are other two categories in terms of innovation and design. So 
whatever is not addressed in the earlier categories, we do any innovation in the project that is also addressed, and there are other four points for regional priority. So that sums up in terms of 110 points, and there are 11 mandatory requirements also as part of the rating system. So how, how it works is if you are able to achieve 40 points, then you are certified. And above 50 or silver, above 70 or gold, and 80 is platinum. So that's how the rating program works. Similarly, coming to ITBC, more or less the points are same. Indeed, has 110, 110 point rating scale. IGBC has a 100 point rating scale. However, if you see the certified silver, gold, platinum, a more or less similar in the IGBC and the lead rating program. However, one point to note here is water being a stretched commodity in India today. Water conservation has been given good amount of weightage, which unfortunately lead doesn't provide. So water is also equally important as energy efficiency in the IGBC rating program. So generally in India today, uh, Mostly commercial buildings are all going to both ITBC and lead rating program. Residential generally the traction is towards IBBC. And uh, we are seeing every year the percentage of projects aspiring to green building certification is only growing in India. Coming to how we help our customers to actually you know design buildings in a green and sustainability manner is through building simulations. So I think as architect, this will definitely interest you in terms of the kind of software which we use, the kind of analysis which we carry out. Some of the analysis which we carry out at the early design stage of the project is starting from looking at the building orientation itself, the facade analysis, solar insulation, daylight, wind, and cap it out with energy solutions. So some of the softwares which we use currently are Ecotech, Equest, and IBMs. Some of the images which will give you an understanding of how this analysis is carried out. So this is an example of a shadow insulation for a facade. If you see the image on the left hand side, there is a lot of insulation on the on the facade. Uh, you can see in the yellow color in the yellow color shade, which, which indicates high insulation. However, by rotating the building by 90 degrees, if you can see that you know the, the insulation has come down by almost 30 to 40 percent. So, you know, we help architects in the early design stage to kind of orient buildings in an efficient manner. This is an example of a commercial building which we have where we have through facade analysis helped architects to kind of you know optimize the facade through placing the right shading at the right facade. So some of the places we have also kind of suggested recessed window, which again compared to a curtain glazing would end up shading the window and provide good shading for the project. Moving on, on the daylight analysis front, what we do here is at the early design stage, simulate the drawings, that is the floor plans, and you know, analyze various glass options in terms of which glass works out well from both daylight as well as the energy aspect. So the image on the left hand side uses a glass with a visual light transmittance of 40%, wherein we get a lux achievement of only 80%. However, as we are increasing the visual light transmittance of the glass to 67%, we're able to get a 97% coverage on the daylight. So this gives you quantitative analysis in terms of really being able to give a specific number if you're doing projects where green building certification is required. Similarly, on the exterior surfaces, we also run you know, uh, wind analysis and the solar insulation studies from where we are able to kind of suggest the exact location for water bodies from the evapotranspiration perspective, which helps in Reducing the microclimate of the exterior surfaces, we can advise you where the grass tape surfaces should be, where you can plant your trees, where should be the shrubs, and so on and so forth. So as to kind of provide uh, you know, comfortable spaces for people who are in the exterior of the buildings. Coming to the last section on the building simulation, we talk about energy simulation here. A very important analysis, not only in green buildings, but I, I strongly recommend that this analysis should be carried out in all the projects where, and at least where the air conditioning is a significant role. So this is an example where we have taken a case wherein we started off with only 4.17% energy efficiency the building was having over an ASHRAE case. Now ASHRAE or ECDC you might have heard are the codes for energy standards. So what we do in energy simulation is basically compare our design building with these standards and see where do you stand in terms of benchmarking against these standards. 
So, for example, this building when we started the asset scale, we are only at 2.17% saving. However, with incremental energy efficiency measures to you know insulation in the wall, a better uh, insulated glass, interior lighting reduction, water cool chillers, and all of that, they're able to increase the saving to 21%. Now, this is not possible to do through simple empirical formulas. However, the energy simulation software helps you in terms of doing this. Before I get into the next category, uh, we'll take a brief uh, break here and I'll see you on the other side of the break. Well, uh, thank you, Sumesh. Thank you for really opening our eyes to everything to do with green buildings and ratings. Uh, but the break is intended to bring some interest in the audience and it's quiz time. You, those who are there before know the rules, but for those who are new, the rules are very simple. What happens is we will be putting up a link on the chat box and it will be a quiz part A, because there is also going to be a quiz part B with two questions each. So you have to click on this link. It takes you to um, a simple page where you see the MCQ, make a choice and hit the submit button. You have all of five minutes to enter the quiz. So you can, uh, if the link is posted, which I think the team must have already done, you can start opening the page and you can even go ahead of me because I'm going to reveal the first question. And it says, IGBC stands for, your options are A, International Green Building Council, B, Innovative Green Building Council, C, Indian Green Building Council, and D, Intense Green Building Council. Uh, if you know what the right one is, you're not having to Google search this because you heard Sumesh articulate it so well, you know the right answer. And if you think that's easy, try this next question, which says, gold certification level by LEED is awarded for achieving how many credit points? Your options for gold, 50 to 59, B, 60 to 79, C, 80 to 110, or D, 40 to 49. And uh, this is how you enter the quiz. You have these up on the link, enter the quiz, select your answer in the MCQ, submit it, and we will start moving forward with the rest of the presentation. So I hope you're getting your five minutes. Team, the meter started about a minute ago, so give it four minutes and then we can close the quiz. But in the meantime, let's carry on with uh, the rest. Welcome back. Uh, so this part, we'll talk about the emerging trends in the green building space. I'll talk about, I'll touch upon two aspects. One is the net zero buildings, and the second part will be the well certification, which is again a new trend which has come up. So we all know that you know we have been doing green building for the last couple of decades now in India. However, is this going to be enough? Is the next question. You know, uh, we, we, are, we are all seeing that you know uh, studies suggesting that we have been what we have been doing in the last two years is not enough. Global warming is still a reality, and we are all seeing the impacts uh, every year uh, due to climate change uh, impacts. So the next initiative should be to look at net zero buildings. When we are not talking today only of 30%, 40% saving, but here we are talking about offsetting the entire energy consumption of the building through an on-site or off-site renewable energy. So now IGBC and both LEED have come out with a certification program. IGBC came out with a certification program in 2018. LEED came up into 2020 to address net zero buildings. So here, the mandatory requirement is your building should meet the ECBC or ASHRAE guidelines when it where it talks about the U value of the roof, the U value of the wall, the glass, the envelope, and all of that, which is very important. And whatever energy is then being consumed by the building should be then offset through a combination of on-site or an off-site solar, or it can be any other renewable source. And we are all aware today that if you are going to construct higher buildings, uh, higher rises, the roof area is not going to be sufficient to kind of meet the energy demand. Hence, you would want to look at off-site options as well. 
when you are designing a net zero building. So now the certification is available only for net zero energy buildings. However, even for water and waste, the certifications have been rolled out uh, early this year. Wherein we are not now talking about only net zero energy buildings, but we need to also start thinking about net zero water, waste, and eventually even net zero carbon. So this is the case study of a building within our campus uh, at Budrej. So we were we, this was the first building in the country to be certified under IGPC's net zero certification program. So while we have been early adopters in India on the green building technologies and everything, even when the net zero program was launched, we were the early adopters to certifying this particular building within Vitroli as a net zero certified building. So this building actually saved around 45% of energy compared to our ASHRAE baselines, water to, to a tune of around 86%. And this building has around 150 kilowatt of solar, which contributes to 10% of its energy consumption. And the rest of the 90% consumption uh, is catered through an open access solar, wherein we have an investment in a solar farm in Baramati, and the solar get, the energy gets you know, built to this premises. And that's how this building becomes a net zero solar. Moving on to the next topic, uh, the wellness certification. Uh, this certification programs have been in India in the last two to five years. However, you know, it has taken the pandemic to really bring the focus on people, productivity, and the health and wellness of people within buildings. And that's how in the last two buildings, dark, sorry, last two years, this certification program has gained a lot of importance. Now let's see what does this certification program talk about. So it addresses you know, wellness to occupant comfort, talent retention, productivity enhancement, innovation, and creativity. So it's not only talking about an absence of illness as well. Uh, you know, when you talk about wellness, it's just not absence of a disease. That's how WHO, you know, points the term of wellness. So this certification program is going to look at how physical, emotional, intellectual, and social well-being is achieved within buildings through various touch points. So it can be a touch point where, you know, there is an odor, within a specific odor within a building. So a, a, a good odor will have a good impact on people. However, a bad odor is tend to put off or reduce the productivity of people. Similarly, what kind of visuals uh, does an occupant get in the exteriors of the building? So if it's a pleasing exterior, definitely it is bound to have a good impact on the, on the occupant. However, and vice versa. Again, this certification program has also been kind of modeled in a way how we an ICBC green building certification program is modeled, wherein it is divided into various categories and the total, total number of points achievable is around 100. Similarly, uh, like lead and ICBC, you have a similar rating scale in terms of certified to platinum, uh, wherein the platinum is the ultimate if you are able to achieve 80 points or more. And some of the categories under the health and well-being certification are indoor air quality, where it talks about the kind of PM 2.5, PM 10 levels, and what kind of filtration, uh, air purification systems you are putting within the building so as to install, so as to ensure good indoor air quality. Similarly, on the water quality front, there are certain requirements in terms of comfort. You know, how can, you know, as architects, provide or design buildings which are more comfortable for people, can be to proper navigation, encouraging people to take the stairs instead of only the elevators from the fitness perspective. Ergonomics is another important part as part of the uh, you know, comfort criteria. Health and sanitation, fitness and nutritional choices, even the kind of food served within the premises comes under the ambit of the certification program in terms of what kind of nutritional choices you are providing to people. Uh, then there is something on emotional and intellectual well-being, wherein uh, whether a well-certified building is actually having signages to kind of educate people, do they run programs wherein, uh, you know, uh, people come and do training programs on the emotional and intellectual well-being to people. And finally, a section even on social well-being. So that's how these 100 points are kind of segregated under these various categories. Uh, similarly, like IGPC, there is a certification program, which is a global certification program launched by an organization called International Well Building Institute. Uh, this again uh, is a US-based uh, organization, uh, 
similar to the icbc version their points are categorized under 10 different categories which you can see on the screen more or less very similar to icbc however in terms of approach and reach are much more holistic and comprehensive to the icbc written program and also to clear a myth whether a project which is going for lead certification whether it complies to more or less all the requirements of bel so the answer is through this diagram where it says that there is only a small overlap so that means even if you are going for lead certification the requirements of bel certification need to be complied are much more than a, a lead certified building and you need to address a lot of other criteria which are not part of the lead certification so as architects you need to be you know conscious about how what kind of daylight are we providing in the space uh, is the ergonomic uh, requirement taken taken care for the occupants uh, are we providing any uh, breakout spaces the kind of uh, you know collaborative spaces which are providing both within the building as well as outside are we providing any biophilic environment within the building where you are taking the nature from outside and creating a nature uh, you know within the building so these are certain points from an architectural perspective it is very important when you are designing a well certified project so with that uh, i'll end uh, today's presentation on this note uh, these are some points which we need to ponder about we do not have a planet b nor a plan b i think uh, this is the time and we all need to kind of take sustainability movement forward and apply these concepts in each and every project that we are doing thank you on that note i'll be available for any questions you might have over this session thank you thank you sumesh uh, trust me you had a challenge on your hands to take the complex subject matter and put it in 20 minutes and my friends from the kind of questions they asked and there are plenty i think you stimulated those young minds quite a bit with that shall we say it's quiz time again oh by the way little interesting trivia my team tells me over 130 of you uh, participated in the quiz and 89% got it right so that's 89% who are off the block in getting the first two questions uh, right so there are two more coming up and here they are quiz question number 3 net zero buildings by the way uh, sorry to just go back a slide you know what you have to do you have to go to your chat box you will find a link you got to click on that link that takes you to quiz part b you guys know the drill but i it's my job to just remind you how you participate in the quiz and the question number 3 back to that net zero buildings are those which reduce energy consumption of a building by your options are a material substitution b specifying only green products c design interventions or d buying carbon credits from the market what do you think is the right answer and your fourth and final question for this session today wellness certification is important and it's important why because a it ensures saving in corporate medicare b it is a current statutory requirement c it has a significant role in improving productivity or d it gives bragging rights to the building occupant now what do you think so if you were listening in to sumesh and he was so articulate i don't think you'd have a problem answering this and winning those lovely prizes so hit the button five more minutes for you to finish quiz part b with that shall we say we are ready to thank our one founding partner who our lic who been with the how to festival since the inception and this is our way of saying thank you lic when there is life there is hope there is meaning but life has its doubts as much as it has life is about challenges life is about opportunities time for joy time for celebration and time to introspect thankfully in every one of life's moments and even beyond life itself there's lic where there is life there's always lic zindagi ke saath bhi 
زندگی کے بعد بھی so we are now coming up to the q and a segment in a minute uh two because uh we've got 22 questions and that's going to be a lot to handle on the show we also got some issues there but before we go to that uh friends you know we've got a lot of feedback from you on the last uh, how to festival and you'll love the montages the collages of great ar- architectural works that we put together for you so you're going to take a look at one more of those uh it was under the ages of selections selections was a program where the expert choice um uh, you know key leading architects were asked to recommend not any of their works but the one which impacted them the most and each of these great architects uh, current architects who are practicing and are big names are all marky names they chose and we took a selection of those 24 uh, offerings and put it into different videos today i'm going to show you one of them and that's coming up more in the future shows right i hope you enjoyed that video uh, i got a little bit of feedback that perhaps the audio stream was a little low uh, guys i hope you were able to just pump up the volume on your your individual laptops and handle devices uh, with that let's go to the last segment of today's show which is the question and answer as i mentioned we've got tons of them to come in but more important we have sumesh nair of godrej was coming i'm going to invite him to come on to our show sumesh if you're there please join in and let's see you in the camera oh, you're already there and hi hi sumesh how are you yeah hey, hi ramesh i'm doing good uh audibility good uh visibility good yes yes all good fantastic did you did you enjoy what's happened up to now did you see the enjoy the selections Yes, yes, of course, of course. Good to see some of the chats uh, coming up, and glad to know this was an interesting topic for the students. 
and uh, looking forward to answering some of their questions. It was interesting, so much because you made it so. Uh, it's a, these are the kind of you know difficult. They're not you know, everybody's not a natural born tutor, but you can take complex subjects and super simplify it. I think I think we've done uh, all our students just the only challenge at my hand was you know compressing all of that in twenty minutes. <laughs> Oh, but, but that's an interesting thing because we've told them and they know it and we keep uh, reminding them, archive is where we, first of all, we're going to upload this presentation. We're also going to take all your documents that you want to share. Sure. We'll take your drawings. There's so many questions. We can't answer it all on the show. We're going to take about seven or eight. By the way, I've just cherry-picked the ones which I think are the right ones. Um, so I'm just going to throw it at you and you're going to be the expert answer it. But sure. every one of these questions we'd like answered and hosted on our head so that nobody gets uh, to go home without a answer. All right. Are you ready to get your first one? Yeah, yeah, sure. In no particular order, I have Ritesh Chaudhary who says, energy efficiency suggestions, do they come after the construction or are they pre-thought? Okay, so if I uh, got the question correctly, uh, the question was whether the energy efficient suggestions come after the construction or is it pre-thought? No, no. So um, I think uh, the energy efficiency starts right when as architects start, uh, you know, putting your pen down to paper. I think that's where uh, the chunk of the energy efficiency interventions have to come. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's too late to address energy efficiency at the operation stage of the project because energy has to, energy efficiency needs to be addressed right uh, you know, both along with the passive architectural features as well as the active elements in terms of MEP. So right from looking at the orientation, looking at the shading elements uh, to the sun angles, all of that plays a very, very important role, uh, you know, when it comes to energy efficiency. That's why I am a believer that energy efficiency needs to start right at the concept design stage of the project. So as to kind of maximize the energy savings in a project because operationally doing energy efficiency uh, you know, you'll not be able to really, uh, you know, maximize the potential uh, when it comes to buildings. Yes, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, that, that that was the myth of the entire uh, thinking and uh, design interventions, which is always pre-thought. The so as architects, you all play a very very major role when it comes to energy efficiency. It's not it's not the uh, only the MEP or the mechanical electrical plumbing guys who who are responsible for energy efficiency. Correct. Uh, can I move to a second one? Uh, Pratiksha Chauhan. Hey, hi, Pratiksha. Welcome back on the show. Uh, you're, you're one of our constant engagers. And your question is, how do we get to know that we are achieving the guidelines which are being followed and prescribed? How do, they, how do you monitor that the prescribed guidelines are also being followed? Okay. So, so the way it works uh, on any project is uh, we come in as consultants uh, who actually work with the project owner, the architect and the MEP consultant. And it's a collaborative approach wherein as a green building consultant, we advise the architects and the MEP consultants saying these are the requirements of the rating program and this is what needs to go into the design. And once as a team, we kind of formalize an efficient design, which is in line with the prescribed requirements of the rating program. Then it's the responsibility of a green building consultant to ensure at every stage of the project, that is once you move from the design to the construction to kind of again, take an update, whether the design intent has got captured in the tender documents, whether the con contractor has understood the intent, whether the construction is happening in line with the prescribed requirements. And eventually when the project gets commissioned, that the design has really got translated into the site. So that is the job of the consultant who comes on board to really, you know, right from the design stage to the project getting the certification to ensure whatever was envisaged at the design is really kind of executed at site and becomes a reality. Robin uh, Kataria has a question which others have also asked, which software was used to carry out solar and daylight analysis? Which software? Okay. So there are multiple softwares which are available in the market today. So some of the softwares which we use are uh, IES, uh, which is which is from UK. Uh, we use Ecotect. Uh, we use uh, Energy Plus. We use uh, uh, Radiance Design Builder, uh, Equest. 
these are some of the softwares which are which are frequently used for uh, you know daylight modeling energy simulations shadow analysis all of this microclimate studies can be done through uh, many of these softwares i think you can give me a little note on this later and maybe students can go and uh, discover more for themselves. Of course, of course. Uh, Vaishnav Kadam, hi Vaishnav, uh, has a question. What can be the most effective way to make people aware, people aware about energy consumption in their buildings and to reduce energy consumption? So he's talking about a little shifting from your topic, but of course, it's a larger umbrella of energy efficiency. How do you make people aware? about energy consumption and to reduce that. Any thoughts? Right. right. So I think uh, we need to split this into two parts. I think uh, one is the energy consumption awareness in commercial buildings and in residential buildings. The reason why I'm splitting it is because, you know, uh, as a quantum in terms of energy, you know, we all have, are aware that office buildings or commercial buildings end up consuming a lot more than what residential buildings do. Uh, because generally you have uh, commercial buildings being air conditioned completely com and comparison to a residential building, you know, you'll have uh, lesser running hours of air conditioning systems. So when it comes to commercial building category today, I think the awareness is much more, uh, you know, most, most of the corporates who design buildings, occupy buildings are aware of the, the energy efficiency requirements and kind of are doing their bit. Uh, however, when it comes to the residential segment, uh, you know, um, it, it's there are no benchmarks currently available. When it comes to a commercial building today, you have a benchmark that a commercial building, if it is operating at say 120 units of electricity per square meter per annum, it's a decent building. Uh, Infosys today is doing at 65, 70 units per square meter per annum. So if you have these kind of benchmarks, what happens is, a building which is operating today at 120 has this benchmark to look forward to and kind of becomes aware that I'm not that great. So let me kind of, you know, take steps to kind of uh, go towards that 70 or 65, which is the benchmark. However, in residential buildings today, you know, do um, all of us at our homes, do we really benchmark our electricity bill with respect to what, what is the, you know, units consumed per square meter or per square feet of my area? Uh, and we do not really or sadly have these kind of benchmarks. Uh, however, when, uh, you know, uh, IGBC or LEED certified homes or buildings come up and when these developers really make a pitch to the prospective home buyer saying that, you know, I have gone for an IGBC certified building and these are the, you know, advantages a home buyer is going to get from these kind of certifications. That's where some amount of learning is coming about, but I'm not saying a lot has been done. However, with more and more residential building going in for certification, more and more commercial buildings going in for certification, I think through word of mouth, uh, you know, it will go down to the people in terms of the awareness on, certif uh, on certifications and on energy efficiency. Well, that was a pretty uh, long answer because uh, it's so generic. The question is very Yeah, funny. it was so generic that, you know, you will have too many aspects to it, but, but thank you. Absolutely. I think you, you did justice and you were patient enough to go through. Now, I'm going to ask for more crisp answers for the remaining because we want to take at least two or three more questions. Okay. Right. Uh, in the interest of the program time, which we're, we're right on the schedule, uh, Pratyaksha Chavan says, how do we get the points on a, in our own design, that is, as an architect, uh, so that we know if our design can be considered as a green design or not? So how do they how do they educate themselves? How do they implement design principles so that they know they're designing a green product? Right. So, uh, so I'm not saying that you know the rating system is a guide is a bible on sustainability. However, it's definitely a good tool to kind of uh, you know judge how green is your design. So I would suggest pick up a lead uh, rating checklist or an IGBC checklist. Identify the points which are related to uh, the ar architectural discipline because not all points are related to the architectural discipline. Identify those points which are related to the architectural discipline and then do a check of your design vis-a-vis -vis compliance to that point. For example, if uh, one of the points is calling for so much green area as a percentage of your total site area, you can do that cross-check. Similarly, when it comes to daylight, there is a requirement that you need to have say 110 lux for 75% of your floor plate you need to run a software to check whether your design is complying to that. So those kind of checks you can do, take the checklist of IGBC and lead, 
start comparing against your design and and you'll come to know how how green you are on those on those metrics so uh, something for uh, us friends and uh, it's not widely known we at locator in the year 2007 put together india's first ebook on green buildings and energy efficiency which by the way we were we are grateful to godrej who were partnered with us in that in that event in the launch event as well uh, the important thing was we had about a thousand pages of information written by experts and a very nice compilation of the top 10 platinum rated lead rated buildings in the in the us because in 2007 i think they were a little ahead of the curve and those buildings were already up and they not were in design stage but they were fulfilled as well absolutely we we, we covered the top 10 buildings what are the design principles which got them to get that award and what were the what did they follow exactly what you said and that was documented so this was available in that so uh, students if any of you are interested you have the chat box say all right sir can you please share with us i'm not going to give it for free i mean it's it's a proprietary information it's a lot of information which you put to from other sources but for you students we'll give it to you if you ask for it okay it is the first ebook on energy efficiency and uh, green buildings uh, management it has things like even uh, how to generate power out of tidal water and you name it it's there it's a very beautiful compilation <laughs> arabica is already on that thing please share the book sir <laughs> Let's let's take a couple of questions, board. Uh, Samesh, I hope you're okay to do that. Sure, okay. sure. Good. So, uh, Pratyuksh uh, Chavan says, uh, how, uh, I'm sorry, I covered that. Siddhi Sanghai says, how much, what is the period of time that these ratings or certificates are viable in these changing times of global warming and rapidly changing, um, you know, uh, you know, the notifications and all that. Periodically, how do you check these buildings? There was a design, it got implemented, it got rated, but then standards are changing, standards are improving. So how does one keep pace? Right. Uh, very good question. And sometimes, you know, once that's the problem which we are facing currently also in some buildings where, you know, get away with the certification and then nobody knows uh, what's happening uh, after that because a building might have a life of 30 to 40 years to go uh, once, you know, it, it is commissioned and up and running. So I think uh, one of the important things to do is uh, put a very good facility team in charge of the building. If you do not have a very good operations team, which is in charge of the building, who's looking at the important parameters, then it's going to be really difficult. You need to have a good soft monitoring of energy uh, set in place, a good operations team, and who's taking the right benchmarks and comparing your building operations with respect to those benchmarks. And whenever you realize that, you know, the energy efficiency trend is moving upwards, take corrective actions, do energy audits every four or five years interval. You come to know, you know, what are the shortcomings, incorporate those, uh, you know, learnings into the building and then uh, keep abreast of the benchmarks and uh, move forward. I think energy audits every four to five years would really give you a real understanding in terms of what is the efficiency deterioration and you can take corrective actions to, uh, you know, keep up pace. With, with, the, with the new standards. Excellent. One last question, uh, Subesh. As I mentioned, there are several more. We'll answer that on the archive. Sure. This uh, is different to the cut cake, as they say. Uh, does data from excavation and land clearing activities need to be collected on a monthly basis in lead? Does dirt and associated debris get included in waste diversion calculation? Yeah, seems like uh, this, this person has actually worked or gone through the lead rating program. Yes, there is a point. Is the one who asked. Okay, uh, yeah. So I think, yeah, so this is one of the points under the material and resources category in both the lead and IGBC rating program. So the, uh, the category, category talks about uh, whatever the waste generated at the building site, uh, how are you actually ensuring that that doesn't go to the landfill? So it, yes, it, uh, it talks about the debris which is generated, the excavation soil which is generated. So the intent is to ensure that this gets reused for, you know, um, landfilling, leveling or any, any of these kind of uh, uh, activities or dumped at a land 
डेजिग्नेटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटी एंड डज नॉट गो टू अ लैंडफिल सो दैट्स द इंटेंट सो यस बोट डेबरी एक्सकवेटेड सॉइल नीड्स टू बी टेकन केयर शुड नॉट गो टू अ लैंडफिल दैट्स द आंसर वाव एक्सीलेंट जस्ट इमेजिन द विथ एंड रेंज ऑफ क्वेश्चंस दैट आई पोज्ड आउट देयर सो यू कैन इमेजिन हाउ मेनी मोर देयर आर इन इन द चैट थैंक यू सुमेश आई एम ट्रूली ग्रेटफुल टू यू ग्रेटफुल टू गोदरेज grateful to the godrej uh, green building uh, department and uh, we hope to have you sometime soon uh, for a greater more in the pshay till then adios and see you around thank my, you my my pleasure thanks for uh, inviting me and giving me an opportunity to interact with the students uh, had a great time answering the questions thank you thank you very much okay um all right uh, asha are you there and ready to share wonderful there you are asha is doing the sharing and uh, asha you want me to also make the announcements i think okay imagine the drum roll guys because it's happening in my head down next slide please asha winner announcements yes the winners are and those who were in the top then i'll also mention them in a minute but the winners of today's quiz contest are out of the 130 plus entrants are bravo paul uday nafiza ali sheetal singh and shrinjoy roy by the way all correct entries were obviously many there were almost about 80 plus uh, got all four correct and so this had to be random selected by the computer so um, it's a good way to do it it's quite democratic and uh, if you want to know who were the others who we had to take the top 10 and then again ask the computer for the top 4 to award the prizes so the top 10 need a mention they are already there on screen paul nafiza um paul nafiza sheetal and shrinjoy then we have monish bagel pratyaksha shrivastava Siddhi Sangai, Pruta Pawar, Kushi Kumar, and Yunus Sayed, and these were all the hundred percent correct. And also, by the way, they passed the fastest. So I think the computer has added that little factor in saying fastest finger first. So moving on, Asha, let's see what we have uh, for them. Oh, lovely popcorn! Time for lunch, yes. But a reminder: next Saturday, we're going to do something different that we've not done on the show before. kitchens designed to take on the might of indian cooking and that's going to be by godrej interior godrej interior have got a lot of preeminence in kitchen design and you know as i i'm not going to tell you about the presentation but i can just tell you the amount of research that the company does in understanding ergonomic studies um ethnographic studies you name it godrej interior does all of that so when they design a kitchen it actually addresses indian cooking and the might of indian cooking which we are all so very very proud of so don't forget that's next uh, saturday moving on to a final uh, reminder asha down saturday 29 jan 12 noon and uh, you have already been sent a link for all the webinars so use the correct one which is for 29 january that's all from me and the team today folks loved having you on the show loved your interaction loved your chat loved your questions and uh, congratulations winners the other winners for the qu- uh, for the q and a uh, edgy questions and for the engagement will be announced on the uh, group post monday tuesday wednesday adios bye uh sorry i did i make a mistake uh, Ravi, can you put me back uh, on screen? Am I back on screen, team? Yes. I want to wish you all a happy Republic Day because that's happening in four days. So it's happening slap bang between our two events. So there you are. Feel proud of this great nation. Feel proud of all those who have contributed to its greatness, and feel proud that you are going to continue the journey of. this being a great country bye bye from me and everyone at team locator